If you watched the Nintendo Indie World Showcase last week, you might have noticed a game called Super Mash, which promised the idea of a game console that can combine the genres of two classic retro-style games into one. The trailer was extremely well put together in my opinion, and the game spoke to me. The only problem is that the game isn't coming to Switch until May of 2020. So I thought, no big, I can wait. There's nothing else coming out in May that I wanted to play. Every last one of them. But, surprise surprise, the game actually came to the Epic Game Store that night. So, I decided to check it out, and this is my review of Super Mash. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, or better yet, subscribe for more content by me. First off, the most important question. Does this game deliver on the promise of combining two game genres into a singular, playable game? I'm happy to say yes! At the launch of the game, there are currently six genres. Platformer, your Mario game. Action Adventure, your top-down Zelda game. Shoot 'em up, exactly what it says. Metroidvania, called Metrovania to avoid any lawsuits. Stealth, the old Metal Gear games, and JRPG. Every game you play is procedurally generated, so it's different each time. And I have a strong feeling that the developers will have more genres ready to go by the time of the Switch release. One of my favorite touches in this game is how it generates a title screen and a short story introduction for each game you make. And some of them are hilarious, mixing font and foreground and background images for absolutely ridiculous game names. I think one of my favorites was Classified Gambler. And while the story cutscenes are usually pretty spot on to what NES era cutscenes were, sometimes the procedural generator behind them can flub it up a little. One time I had a story about a bard who was now a dancer, and then I started playing the game as a ninja. After a few hours of playing Super Mesh, you'll probably find the novelty of these cutscenes starting to wear off. I found myself skipping most of them after about two hours of playing the game. But, much more important, is the gameplay. My skepticism coming into this game was that there was really only going to be so many games you could play, basically one for each combination. This is totally wrong, however, as each game is procedurally generated every time. You're given a win state and a ton of different variables, which I'll explain. The win state is usually destroy X number of certain types of enemy, or destroy a particular tough enemy, or find this character or item. Depending on the genres you use, it can be other things, but there are only a set number of possibilities. You're also given a different character from a pool that can change each time, depending on the genres. At first, the pool of characters seems really expansive, but eventually you'll start seeing some familiar faces. I actually ended up liking this, however, because you somehow start developing an attachment to some of your favorites. You'll also receive a starting weapon which is based on the genre. Sometimes this can be brutal, as a bad weapon can lead to some difficult starts. But difficulty is usually dictated by which glitches you get. Glitches are probably my least favorite part of the game, but I completely understand that they're also essential to keeping the game interesting. Let me explain. Basically, every game you play will have one positive glitch, and depending on the difficulty, zero to two negative glitches. Glitches are basically a status or a reaction that occurs every time you perform a certain action, which isn't explained to you until you trigger it in-game. Sometimes, this breaks the game in a good way. One time I had a positive glitch that instantly killed an enemy on screen if I turned to the left. I'd walk into a room and keep hitting left on my controller, quickly clearing any enemies and defeating the challenge. On the other hand, some glitches can create extremely frustrating circumstances. One time I had a glitch that spawned an enemy any time I attacked making it nearly impossible to progress. And even worse, one time I had a glitch that created an unwinnable state. Every time I entered a screen, it forced me to walk to the right, but I had to go to the left in order to advance. Anytime I entered the new screen to the left, my character instantly went right and brought me back to the last screen, softlocking my game. Most of my problems with glitches occurred while playing the action-adventure genre. And I know the game's developers are actively talking to fans in their Discord, trying to fix issues like this. Every time you complete a game, you get dev cards and tokens. Dev cards basically let you control more of the variables for each game you play. Say you really like a certain character or weapon. Well, if you have that dev card, you can bring them into any game they're applicable for. This made for some hilarious scenarios, where I had a JRPG party consisting of an anime knight, an anime healer girl, and a fighter jet, wielding a bow and arrow. You can also use the tokens acquired to purchase more card packs, which will also always include one rare card per pack. This is a very Nintendo-style reward system, and I love it. Miyamoto's philosophy on rewarding the player is that you just reward them with more gameplay, and this game delivers on that in spades. 
My biggest slash only complaint with the system, which is otherwise cool as hell, is that each card is a one-time use. Because of this, I found myself barely ever using them, because I liked seeing my collection of dev cards increase. And now is when I talk about how this game strings you along, which is to say, the story. It's boring and not the driving force of the game. Basically, the main character and his sister own a retro game shop, and they're about to get kicked out because their landlord is selling the property. They do a random act of kindness at a garage sale and get gifted with this console that can magically combine games. They then set out to play it slash make and sell cool games to save their store. This story was such a non-starter for me. I hated being out in the real world of this game, and found myself just wanting to get back to the loop of playing mashups. The main things you can do in the shop is buy more cards, talk to customers who will give you certain quests on what game to play, or set up the next story mission, which usually revolves on telling you which game to play. But one cool thing here is that there is a book called the Prime Mash Journal. Inside, there is a lot of what looks like concept art for different games in the genres. You can color in the book by doing or finding certain things while playing games. If you get a whole page colored in, you can fight a boss level for that genre, which is supposed to be the culmination for each game type. Honestly, the coloring in of the pages is what kept me going here, because the boss fights that I've played so far have been a little underwhelming. The only other major complaint I have right now is that when you lose a game, it gives you the option to quick restart, which starts you right before the first playable moment or do a regular restart, which starts you back at the title screen, forcing you to skip through the cutscene and the character introduction screen once again, ultimately wasting about 15 seconds before you can actually start playing. When you die, the game naturally puts the cursor on the full restart and not the quick restart, even though it's the second option listed. This seems like a really weird choice to me, and one that I think will be patched soon, as a lot of people have mentioned it on the game's Discord. My final verdict on Super Mash is that it actually has a lot to offer, but some of the novelty will wear off in the first few hours. If you are on the fence about getting this game, I might recommend waiting until the Switch port, which will likely include more features and have a lot of the things I didn't like fixed. But if you're a fan of retro games and the concept sounds cool to you, this is a pretty fun and surprising indie game which delivers on what it promises, but just falls short of being great. I've played it for around 4-5 to five hours, and while I'd like to play some more, I think I'm going to wait until some patches come in before I return. Hey, thank you for watching my video on Super Mesh. Um, just one more quick minute of your time. I quit my job this month! Um, so, if you enjoyed this video or any other content on my channel, consider checking out my Patreon. I've got a few rewards for people there, including an exclusive episode of the other show I do called Around the Monitor every month, which is available at the lowest donation tier. Speaking of Around the Monitor, we record live every Thursday on twitch.tv slash kingkaiser and talk through all the week's gaming news. And you can be a part of that show by joining our Discord, which I'll link down below. But if you don't care to follow or support us that way, absolutely no problem. Maybe just give this video a like or share it with a friend who you think would enjoy it. Either way, it helps out the channel's visibility immensely. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Happy holidays to you and yours, and have a wonderful new year.